Hi, I'm Nathan Lusk with Warrior with a Pin Games, and today we're going to talk about a new game called Hatamoto Rivals. It is uh, for two to six players, and each player will take on the role of a Hatamoto, which is a Japanese word for basically a duke or a prince, um, under the service of the daimyo, who is, that's a Japanese word for basically a king or a, someone who, um, they don't own land, but um, a warlord in a way. And each of us is trying to fill orders from uh, the daimyo to uh, help him continue his war efforts. Now to fill those orders, we provide him with uh, cavalry, infantry, rifles, and rice. And each of his orders has some combination of those that we have to try to fill. Uh, when you fill an order, you gain honor. When you fail to fill an order, you lose half of the honor that was available for that order. And we're also allowed to ask each other for help. So if you get an order that you're really close to filling, um, you can ask one of your rivals to help you get that order filled um, as long as you've got some favor with that rival. So we're going to go over all the different aspects of the game. But first, I've got a sample game set up for you with two players here. Um, I want to go over the aspects of the, uh, the basic part of the game first. And that's going to include the character cards. Each character is uh, a different color. There are two of each color. And there are six... Um, of six different colors to choose from. So each each player must first select a character of a different color than everyone else. And so, for example, the two red characters, one is Naito Masatoyo, and the other is Yamagata Masakage. Uh, they both specialize in farms. So Naito here starts with three farms already in play, which no one else begins with more than one. And Yamagata here only starts with one in play, but every other farm that he, he uh, builds is worth two rice every turn instead of one. So that's how they both specialize in the same thing, but they do it differently. So every character also starts out with the exact same supplies before the game begins. That's three cavalry, two infantry, one rifle, and a rice. So let me put my farms back on here, and we're going to collect that uh three cavalry for each of these characters so there's one two three and three cavalry for him two infantry for each one rice for each whoops that's a rifle sorry there's a rifle there's a rifle and a rice Oop, wrong guy there we go now each one has their starting stuff and now as the game is beginning, you collect one rice for every farm that you currently have in play. So he gets one, but this guy gets three because he has three farms to start the game with. Now, this guy has a specialty too, and his specialty is right here in his merchants. Every player can use a merchant <clears throat> where you put yin there during your turn, and on your second turn, it advances on your third turn, it advances to the end, and the amount of yin you have there doubles, and you're able to take that off, add it to some yin from the bank, and that will double the amount of yin you have for the next turn from that investment. So if you were to invest, say, three yin into your um, merchants, then in three turns, you would, you would get six yin added to the 10 that you get every turn. Every player gets 10 yin every turn. And you would add that, and so you'd have 16 yen to spend on that turn. But this yellow character is different. His money doesn't double in three turns. It instead triples. So his three yen would become nine yen after a couple of turns. Um, and so each character has his own specialty. And in, inside each of those specialties, there's two different specialties. The other yellow player, who also specializes in, in merchants... He does like everyone else and only doubles his money, but he does it every other turn. He's just much faster at getting twice, of, twice his investment back out. So uh, these two characters 
are going to play the game and I have all of their starting uh, stuff ready to go. So the first thing that they have to do is to spend the 10 yen that they get every turn on the things that they want to buy. Now, if you look here, the price of cavalry is three yen for two cavalry. The price of infantry is one yen for one infantry. The price of rifles is two yen for every rifle. And then on your farms, you're allowed to build farms every turn also. You just commit a yen to build a farm. And then at the end of the turn, that farm gets replaced or that yen gets replaced with a new farm. And at the beginning of every turn, you collect a piece of rice for every farm you own. So that's how you get more rice. There's also the courier right here in the middle. It is uh, really neat the way the courier works. To use the courier, you take a yen and you put it on the courier, but you add three favor tokens to that courier and you give that favor, that yen with the favor on it, to another player. And then that means that that player now owes you three favors or uh, to make it easier to understand, that player now owes you three supplies of some kind to help you try to fill an order. So as you're trying to fill your order later, you're allowed to ask anyone that you've given favor to for help to fill that order. Now there's an upside and a downside. The upside is you'll fill the order and you'll gain a lot of honor for filling that order. The downside is you'll, you'll give that person that helped you half that amount of honor also for helping you to fill that order if they did it voluntarily. If they choose not to help you and you end up filling the order anyway, um, which, uh, you know, I can explain that now. When someone turns you down for help, you are allowed to go ahead and take one half of the items that you asked for, round it up, and um, they don't get anything for it. They gain no honor for not voluntarily helping you, but you do get half the supplies you asked for. So let's figure out how we're going to do this. Let's see. I've already spent one, three, four, five. I think I'm on yen short. There we go. So I, he's going to spend one on to get a new farm. He's also going to put one in the merchant. He's going to buy a new rifle. He's going to buy two new infantry, three new cavalry, and you know what? Let's let's buy an extra infantry guy. So this player will fill his orders or will will finish his purchases. Let's put it that way. He gains two cavalry. He'll gain three infantry. He'll gain one rifle and the merchant investment stays. This character is going to, he's actually gonna get a favor. He's gonna invest quite a bit because his investments are very powerful. And he's gonna put three tokens, three favor tokens on that. This gets him his two rifles, or one rifle, I'm sorry. This will get him two cavalry. This gets him a new farm. And then he gives these to this player. So this player takes the favor. He's gonna be able to use this yen on his next turn, not on this one. But for now, these three favor tokens go on the color of the person that gave him the favor. That way you can keep track of who's given you how much favor. So, at this point, they both spent all of their yen. They've, they've gotten their supplies going. And now, if you see the yellow diamond on the bottom of each one, that's the turn order for the characters. So different characters always go first, so on and so forth. So the two red guys are number one and two. So they will always go first, no matter how many players you have. The two yellow guys are three and four. So whichever one of them you have uh, in the game, if, if any of them, they will go second if if there are red players in the game. If there are no red players, then they'll be the first characters to go, so on and so forth. So as the first player, the person who's going first in a turn always gets to look through the different orders and figure out what order they want to fill and just choose it. They get to take it and boom, that's my order. Everyone else has to choose randomly from what's left over. So we're gonna give the yellow player this one and now, they're both ready to fill orders. You then fill the orders in the order in which 
you chose them, uh, the order on the, on the character. So this order is pretty easy. That's why Red took it. It requires one cavalry, one infantry, one rifle, and one rice. Now he doesn't get much for it. It's only worth six honor, but it's an easy order. It doesn't cost him much to fill it. He takes all of those supplies. He puts them back into the bank. And he's now filled that order and he's now gained six honor for doing very little, okay? Now the other player now gets a chance to fill his orders. His order is a difficult one. It is nothing but straight up 10 cavalry. And that is not an easy order to fill. He currently has five, but his opponent only has four. So even if he had enough favor to ask for help, they couldn't put together enough cavalry between the two of them to fill the order. So since he can't fill his order, he's gonna lose half of that honor value, which would make it 10. And the, the score after one turn is six to negative, excuse me, to negative 10. So now they would begin the second turn. At this point, they will again collect one rice for every farm that they own. So he has two farms. Uh, the red player has four farms. So he gets four rice. And now they collect their 10 yen, just like they did in the first turn. And that's how much they're gonna get to spend on this turn. They also both need to advance their merchants one space. Their investments at the merchants are now closer to paying off. And they are now going to spend their money. Now remember the red player has an extra yen because the yellow player gave him some favor last turn. So he's gonna have 11 to spend while the yellow player only has uh, 10. <clears throat> so red's gonna buy another farm. He's gonna go ahead and get some favor with yellow because he thinks he's probably gonna end up needing that pretty soon. He's uh, really short on rifles, so he's gonna buy some of those. He's gonna put his last two into the merchant. So he bought everything but some infantry this turn. So let's get these disseminated. He's gonna give favor to yellow. He's gonna get one new farm. He's gonna get two new cavalry. And he's gonna get two new rifles. The yellow player, now this would, this would be happening at the same time. The yellow player um, remembers that his last order required 10 cavalry. And he knows from having played this game earlier uh, before that cavalry is usually the highest, it's in highest demand. So he's definitely never going to skip a turn of buying cavalry. He knows he wants to get another farm. He knows he's going to need some infantry. He also wants to get a rifle going. And gosh, it's really tough to figure out where to put the rest of it. I think he's going to put the last three into the merchant. He may not be able to fill an order again this turn, but um, he's, he's building up his supplies. The important part to this game is that you don't actually fill every order. I've never, there's never been a player that filled every order they got because it's just almost impossible to get that lucky. The orders are very difficult to fill. Um, and so what you're really hoping to do is fill enough orders that you're in the positive um, in honor and that it was enough to be more positive than the other players. So his supplies have now been purchased. Everything on his board is ready to go. Both boards are ready to go. And now, because it's turn number two, the second player, which is yellow, gets to choose what order from the second set of orders he wants to fill. And he's gonna take the easy one. Or is he? Yeah, he's gonna take the easy one. It's just two of everything. And then this other player, red, has to just take a random one. He'll just take that one. So yellow gets to go first. He, he spends two cavalry, two infantry, two rifles, and two rice. And that nets him a total of 12 honor. So he has gone from negative 10 now to positive two. And now the red player has to see if he can fill his order. Oh, that's a tall one. Five infantry, one, two, three, four. He actually is one, two, three, 
four, five, six. He's actually only one infantry short. And notice his rival over here has an infantry and he has favor with him. That's worth it. Now he's gonna give his rival some honor also, but the fact of the matter is, Red will be filling a, a much bigger order worth 23 honor. He'll give his opponent uh, 11 honor, but he'll gain 23 himself. So sure, let's let's do that. So he's gonna fill, well, he's gonna ask for help first. Now he remembers, Red remembers, that when you ask for help, if your opponent says no, you, you can still take half of what you ask for. So since he only needs one infantry to fill this order, because that's all he's short, um, and you get to round up on fractions when you're asking for favor, he's gonna go ahead and just ask for one infantry. Now yellow, seeing an opportunity here, should obviously say yes, because he's gonna get 11 honor for just one infantry. So yellow is gonna say yes and do it voluntarily, which means that he gets to get rid of a favor because he did it voluntarily. He gives that infantry to red and yellow immediately gains 11 infantry right then, whether red fills the order or not. So he has just gone from, what was he last turn? He was, um. He lost 10 and then gained two or 12. So now he's at two honor and he's going to gain 11. That puts him at 13. While this guy was at six and now he's going to spend five, I'm sorry, six cavalry, five infantry, two, no, nope, three rifles and one rice. And he'll go from six to 29 honor because he gets the full amount for filling the order. <clears throat> so the current scores are 29 to 12, <clears throat> and red seems to be off to a good start. However, notice how short he is on all of his supplies now. He's got a pretty uh, uphill battle to try to refill all of his supplies to be able to fill more orders. So that, that turn is over. We go now to the third turn. Each one collects a rice for every farm he owns. So that guy gets three. This guy gets five. I like to keep them in stacks of five. It's a little easier to see what's going on. And they each get 10 yen to spend for this turn. Uh, this guy gets an extra yen. And actually, his investment will now pay off. Actually, both of them have investments that pay off on this turn. So, let's do his 10 first. There's eight. We'll put two more on there. Now, there's his 10 plus the one he got from favor. And now their investments move forward. Boom, boom. And this three turns into nine. So there's three. Caught it. Six. And nine. While the other player, uh, his investment doubles. So it goes from one to two. And his other investment moves forward. Okay, now they're both ready to go. One player has 20 yen to spend for this turn because of investments and favor. The other player has 12 because of a very small investment. And so now they both would purchase uh, cavalry, infantry, rifles, more farms, and favor with each other however they wanted to. And then um, red would again be first and choose the order that he wants to fill. So that's how the game plays. At the end of the game, whoever has earned uh, the most honor becomes Takeda Shingen, who's the daimyo, becomes his next uh, taisho, which is the head general, basically, the, the most trusted advisor general of Takeda Shingen. And um, after six turns, the person with the most honor wins, and that's the end of the game. So... As you can see, it's a relatively short game, even with six players, because everyone uh, does their purchasing and giving favor and all that all at the same time. Um, the, only, the only time that you separate out into individual turns is when you're trying to fill orders, because that is important. The people that go first um, can ask help from the people that haven't gone yet. Of course, of course, you can ask for people that have also gone first, but they're gonna have less supplies to give you. So. Um, it's, it's really nice to be able to go first and choose your order. So, 
Um, that's Hatamoto Rivals. Uh, there are 12 different characters to choose from. There's two each that specialize in each different part of the game. Two specialize in cavalry. One just gets one for free every turn. The other gets a discount on buying cavalry. There are two people that specialize in infantry. One just gets a free one every turn. The other one gets a little bit cheaper infantry than everybody else. There are two people that specialize in rifles. One gets a free rifle every turn. The other gets discounted rifles. You've already seen the two guys that specialize in farms. You've seen one, uh, you actually have showed you both of the guys that specialize in merchants. And then there are two people that specialize in the courier. One of them, instead of getting three favor for giving you a yin as a, as a, as a currying favor, he gives five favor. So he is able to call on uh, a lot more favors uh, just with a small investment than everyone else is. And then the other guy that specializes in the courier, he doesn't get any more favor than anyone else. His advantage is that if he asks you for help and he shows you the order that he um, is trying to fill and uh, by showing you, you realize that if you do uh, go with his request and give him what he's asking for, that it actually will fill the order, you are compelled, you must uh, accept his offer and give him the troops. Now it's an upside and a downside. Sure, you're, it means you're out some supplies, but it also means you're guaranteed some honor this turn because he's got to give you half of the honor on that order. But, um, you know, at, at least you get the points when you lose those units. So, uh, this is Hatamoto Rivals uh, with Warrior with a Pin Games. Um, it's a neat game. It's relatively quick. It's very easy to understand. The different powers give uh, the different characters a uh, very specialized feel. Um, you can't play the game as yellow and, and have it feel the same as when you play the game as red or blue or green or the orange players or the gray players. So they're, they're, they all play out very differently. And it's really neat, in a, especially in a full game of six, to see the different strategies that people employ to try to gain honor. Um, you notice as you play the game that most players are hesitant to ask for help because they know that they're uh, giving honor to a rival. But most players are very, very happy to give the help because that's where the real victory uh uh, amount of honor, the real high amounts of honor can be got, uh, gained is from helping other players. So while they're hesitant to ask for help, they're always willing to give help. And it's a really neat part of the game to have that kind of cooperative feel where all the players really do want to help each other. It's just a question of whether they're going to be asked or not. So that's Hatamoto Rivals. Like all of my games, it needs artwork on it. Um, and I appreciate you watching this video. And I'd love for you to check out my Patreon page, see if it's something that you'd like to support and see what level you'd like to support me uh, in getting artwork to all of these games so that I can get these games out and on the market. Uh, I'm Nathan Lusk, Warrior with the Pen Games, and I really appreciate you spending time with me. Happy gaming, man.